my name is Anna Victoria for those of you who don't know me and today I am going to talk all about my fitness journey and my transformation. Say hi Rigatoni. I can just do the video like this, right? <laughs> so I'm just going to start by giving you a little bit of background. I did not grow up with the least bit of knowledge about healthy eating or working out and to be honest, I really didn't care. One thing that I'm so grateful to social media for is really making fitness seem like it is for everyone, which it absolutely is. But prior to social media, I personally don't think it felt that way. My perception, and this is only my perception growing up in a small town in Northern California, was that people who worked out a lot and who ate really healthy were just really into themselves and just cared about what they looked like. And what I had the biggest problem with was it seemed like people who were really into working out thought they were better than other people. It definitely is not a fair generalization, but nevertheless, that was my perception. I kind of refused the whole idea of working out and eating healthy. So while I definitely always wished for a flat tummy. I, it's something that I never really had. My abdomen, my middle section is where I've always held the majority of my weight. So the idea of having a flat stomach was like in my dreams. I, of course, it's something that I wanted. That absolutely was something that I looked at women who had a really flat tummy and it was like, wow, I would love to have that, but it is never gonna happen. With that being said, I never cared enough about my stomach, about how you know big it was or how bloated I looked, enough to do something about it. And so I was pretty content with my body. I wasn't in great shape, but I was in good enough shape to where I was like, eh, good enough for me. <laughs> I pretty much ate fast food, my entire life, I was eating microwavable food, fast food, packaged processed foods. That was 100% what my diet consisted of from when I was about 12 up through college. And I loved it. Food was pure indulgence. It was pure gluttony. It needs to taste good or there was no chance. And I did not care. Or I wasn't even aware of how it would affect my body. These days, looking back, I'm just like, how did I not know the food I was eating that was responsible for the way I was feeling? Going into my early 20s, I started having health problems. I had a lot of digestive issues. I had a lot of GI issues. The connecting the dots, it just wasn't there. You know, I was not putting two and two together. And I even went to the emergency room. It was my first day of my senior year of college. I keeled over and I could not stand up because of the excruciating pain in my stomach. Pretty much it was from all the fast food and all the junk that I had been eating for years. It finally had caught up with me. They never asked me about my diet. They never asked me about my workout routine, what type of things I was putting into my body. It was just, this is the medicine that you need for your digestive and GI issues. That was it. I didn't look any further into it. And it wasn't until I started dating Luca. He was my boyfriend at the time. He's now my husband. He is Italian and they eat very, very fresh, whole natural foods, very balanced. They eat pasta, but they also eat fish and legumes, beans, nuts, seeds, meat, dairy, grains, they eat veggies, fruits, they eat it all. And when he came into my life and he started noticing how I was eating, he was the one that would say to me, Anna, you can't eat eating goldfish crackers for dinner. And I would tell him, yeah, I can. Leave me alone, it's delicious, I love it. That's what was going through my mind. I would just keep brushing him off. Slowly but surely, it started to seep into my mind because of Luca's influence that it was what I was putting in my body that was affecting my digestive system and my health overall. And not to mention my energy levels were horrible. I was pretty much just in bed constantly. Granted, I was working full time and going to school full time. A little bit of exhaustion is, just comes with that, but I had no energy levels. I had poor sleep quality and that all was stemming from what I was eating and my lack of activity level. Fast forward about one year into our relationship, we moved to China. <laughs> we moved to Shanghai for one year and that is where Luca 
pinned me, so to speak, and he said, Anna, you no longer have the excuse of I work full time, I go to school full time, so I don't have time to work out or eat healthy. You have the time now. I was studying in China, but only for about four hours a day. So I pretty much surrendered and I was like, you know what? You're right, I'm out of excuses. Now I have the time, which is crazy to me because I'm busier now than when I was working full time and going to school full time. At the end of the day, um, how busy you are and whether you have time or not, it's really just a matter of perspective. Nevertheless, I did start my journey in China. This was in October, November, 2012. And I knew nothing. The only thing that I knew from growing up was just a little bit about physical activity in regards to sports. I did play softball. I did cheerleading a little bit. I actually coached cheerleading longer than I cheerled myself. I really was starting from scratch. I just went to good old Google. These days, there are so many apps and guides and so many awesome resources that tell you exactly what to do, but those didn't really exist when I first started my journey. Anytime I came across a new topic, I would Google it both sides because anything that you Google, there's gonna be two sides. There's gonna be one side that says it's the best thing in the world and another side that's gonna say it's the worst thing in the world. I really wanted to be sure that I was taking the time to research both sides and come to an educated decision that I felt best applied to my life. Around the same time is when I decided to create an Instagram account. I had like my own personal Instagram account, but I would never dare post something about me working out on it. So I created a separate Instagram account that was just a page for me to post things that motivated me, motivational quotes, recipes I wanted to try, transformations that inspired me. And that was kind of my way of trying to give myself that motivation because I was severely lacking. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, in the beginning, Luca really was the one that was pushing me to work out. I was literally kicking and screaming. I'm not kidding. I reverted to the antics of a five-year-old that was getting her toys taken away. I was like flailing on the bed. Like I do not want to go to the gym. It was one of the hardest things I had ever set out to do because it wasn't just about, I don't wanna go to the gym, I don't wanna work out, I love food, I love junk food. It was also just kind of fighting that perception in my head that people who go to the gym think they're better than other people. It was me battling that mental block. And I really, honestly, guys, I feel bad for even bringing that up, but I do think it's an important thing to point out because that is a perception that I had and there's no doubt that there are other people that still feel that way. It is something that I'm passionate about to help make fitness accessible for anyone and everyone no matter where you come from, no matter if you think fitness is for you or not because I was there. I was that person that thought that it was the last thing that you would ever catch me doing and it was kind of embarrassing. That's why I didn't tell my friends or family for about a year. So pretty much I had this Instagram account. That was my outlet. I was all alone in China except for Luca. I was in an unknown world and I pretty much threw myself into my fitness journey. At this point in time, I started getting followers. I never ever created the account to get people to follow me, but because this was at the beginning of Instagram, this was November, 2012, my page just started growing naturally. I was never posting myself. That's not what it was about. I didn't post myself for about a year. I was just posting the same things, quotes that motivated me, and that ended up turning into me posting quotes that I thought would motivate others. I started getting comments of people saying, thank you for posting that quote, that motivated me to go to the gym. And when I would read those, it just, it really fed my soul and it made me so happy to know that I was contributing in some way and just helping at least one person. And that is kind of how I got started in the Instagram world. It really was an accident. Sometimes I'm just like, how did this happen? Like <laughs> this girl who did not grow up in fitness that did not care about eating healthy, kind of was against it in a way and just, I, I reflect on that a lot and it's something that I don't want to take for granted and the fact that I'm able to share my story and hopefully inspire others, it really, it's not something I take lightly and I'm really grateful for it. From the very beginning, the reason why I kept posting on that Instagram account is because I knew how hard it was to get started. 
not just physically, but mentally of getting yourself out of that block. And I wanted to help others make that same change. Honestly, guys, when I talk to you about your own journey and you're like, it's been four weeks and I'm really struggling and I just feel like I this isn't meant for me. You guys, it took me minimum of six months to even get the hang of it. And so that's why I think it's so important to not be hard on yourself because that's not what it's about. It's not about being perfect from the very beginning. I wanna talk some more specifics about my journey. From the beginning, as far as what I ate, I never cut out food groups. I just wanted to start making healthier food swaps and adding protein in there because I pretty much was like not eating protein at all before. I just wanted to eat balanced and I also was not even counting calories. I just really did not subscribe to the mentality that you needed to eat a set number of calories and that that meant you were healthy. I always believed that the quality of the calorie mattered a lot more than the overall quantity. I did intuitive eating that's where I just ate until I felt satisfied and, and I stopped when I felt satisfied except for protein it wasn't ever like tracking and writing it down but I made a mental note to know okay how much protein is in eggs six grams how many eggs did I have today four great I had 24 grams okay 20 grams in that protein shake 20 grams and 100 grams of chicken etc so I would just kind of add it up in my head but I'm also a numbers person so I kind of enjoyed adding that up I definitely did keep track of my protein because from the very beginning of my journey I was lifting weights I also never subscribe to the mentality that weights would make you bulky. I understood women do not have the testosterone in their bodies like men do to give us just bulky muscle that easily. I want a lean and toned body. If I could get that flat tummy, that would be amazing but I doubt that's gonna happen. Honestly, from the beginning, I was just like, okay, let's see where the, this goes. So yeah, I started lifting weights from the very, very beginning and I loved it. I loved feeling strong and I loved feeling like I was progressing and that I could see that progress in the weight I was able to lift, in my endurance, in my confidence, and there were just so many other things. And my digestion and my GI issues, they pretty much disappeared. I didn't need any medicine. Obviously working out helped, but it absolutely was my eating. And even to this day, when I have cheat meals, I immediately start to get digestive issues. And as soon as I start eating healthy again, they go away. It's kind of a nice little system to keep my eating in check because while I absolutely indulge and I believe very much that you should not restrict yourself, I always have to reel it in because I just don't want to deal with the health problems. That is how I got started. It definitely is still something I look back on and I just I can't believe where it's brought me I definitely never thought I would last more than four weeks and five years later wait five six years later and I'm still here I'm really grateful that I stuck out that really really uncomfortable time period in the beginning of when working out and eating healthy was the last thing that I wanted to do. It sucks. <laughs> like you, if you're not used to working out and eating healthy and if you haven't reaped those benefits yet, it is kind of like a, what am I doing? There's so many other things I would rather be doing. And you have to push through that really uncomfortable time period to get to the point where you're like, okay, I feel it. I can feel the results, I can see the results, and that is when you really get it and that this starts to become a lifestyle. We are always going to go through ups and downs. We're always going to have periods of time in our life where fitness takes a back seat. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that and to be okay with it. When you're able to go on vacation and be like, you know what? I wanna forget that calories exist, that macros exist. I just wanna live and the gym will still be there when I get home. That is what I think is the best way to approach living a healthy lifestyle. It's letting go of the restriction, it's letting go of the perfection and just really achieving balance. That is why I have been able to continue to see progress because I was just like, you know what? Let's do this the right way. I don't wanna yo-yo. I just wanna find what works for me, what balance makes me happy and what allows me to both live my health and my happiest life at the same time. I think that cheat meals are very important. I've always had cheat meals, whether you want to call them cheat or treat meals, there's different perspectives on that. It is very important to allow yourself those because that is you living your life. I mean, if you have dinners out, whether it's a cheat or a treat meal every single night of the week, that's not balanced. That is going to one extreme. The general idea is 80-20. Sure, maybe sometimes I'm super focused and on track. I'm more like 90-10. 
but I will always, always <laughs> allow myself that wiggle room and the ability to enjoy myself and not feel restricted. And other times if I'm on vacation, it might be 50-50. It might even be 30-70. It's very important to allow yourself to go back into the, you know, kind of 50-50 middle range because you're on vacation. The amount of stress that trying to be too perfect is working against you. The higher your cortisol, the more your body is holding on to fat the less it's going to let go of it. Your workouts could be on point. You could be eating so healthy, but if your stress is through the roof, if you're not getting enough sleep, then your body is not gonna be able to do what it is meant to do and allow you to get the results that you are working so hard for. So I just really, really believe in an approach and a lifestyle that balances all of those things. And you know what? We're never gonna get it down perfectly, but that's life. And it's not about striving for perfection. It's about knowing that you're gonna ebb and flow through life and through different periods of time in your life where you're more or less on track and that's okay. As long as you don't just completely give it up, that is the only thing that I don't want anyone to do. And that normally happens because you feel restricted or because you feel like you have to do things in a certain way. Fitness is for everyone. There's so many different approaches and ways that you can make it work into your life. I think I went off on a little bit of a tangent. I just wanna point out a few of the things that I struggled with the most. What I've noticed is my biggest struggles were always mental things. I had a really hard time in the beginning coming to terms with the fact that I needed to kind of hone in on my calories and macros. There came a point where I am getting into this whole eating healthy and working out thing, but I'm plateauing. I want more results. I really had to like swallow my pride a bit and be like, you know what? I need to look into what macros are all about. And I'm so happy I did. For those of you that don't know, macros are your protein, carbs, and your fats. I have a video on my YouTube that goes into it in a ton of detail. I started looking into macros and I was realizing, wow, I'm actually really good on my protein, but my fats are way too low and my carbs are way too high. Big surprise. <laughs> so I did start looking into my macros and that is when my body just went like whoop to like the next level because I started really honing in on exactly what my body needed. And then the next step was I kind of shifted gears from lifting to more circuit-based workouts. When I was lifting, I was spending like one hour lifting and then like 20 minutes of doing cardio. It was stretching and warming up and cooling down and all that. I was in the gym for an hour and 45 minutes, four times a week. That's a long time. I just kind of got to the point where I felt like I was living in the gym. So I embarked on the next part of my journey of finding ways that I could still balance strength training because I believe very much that for women, strengthening your body is what tones, sculpts, and shapes your body. So I didn't want to cut strength training out, but I wanted to do it in a way where I could also burn fat and get my heart rate up in the moment, get that kind of cardio piece at the same time as my strength training. So that is really how I started designing my circuit-based workouts. That was definitely the next step in my journey, and I felt like those two pieces I struggled with mentally because I was like, no, I need to lift, <laughs> you know, like lifting is the way to get results. I felt like I was very narrow-minded. I'm saying this now because I have no problem admitting it, but I had plateaued and it also just wasn't really working for my lifestyle anymore in terms of my schedule. And by the way, the reverse can apply. If you are so used to doing circuit-based workouts and really high-intensity workouts and you've plateaued, you might need to switch to lifting. More lower intensity, heavier weights. So what you need to do in your fitness journey is always just going to be something different that you're not used to doing. It's not what someone else is doing. It's what your body is used to doing and changing it up from there. Strength training, <laughs> circuit training, balancing my journey between those two workout styles and macros, honing in on what my body needed. Also, I just wanna add, you guys are probably gonna ask, what macros did you follow? I don't remember <laughs> the exact ratio I started out with. I know this is really annoying, but the ratio that is right for you just kinda depends on you. You have to choose a ratio, stick to it, actually follow it for a good six weeks, and then change it and watch and see how your body changes. The last thing that I wanna talk about is what I wish I knew when I first started my journey. First and foremost, I wish that I knew that I didn't need to be perfect, that I just need to focus on progress, so progress, not perfection. 
and to not compare myself to other people's journeys. And this is something that I think really kind of came into our lives with the entry of social media, is that constant comparison game. And so I wish that I knew from the very beginning that everyone's journey is going to look different. Everyone's body is going to look different. Everyone's body responds different ways to different workout styles, to different ways of eating, and to not let that get me down. So that is about my fitness journey. Really, I think it's more accurate to say the beginning of my fitness journey because A, my journey is not over and I'm constantly gonna be learning and I always am going to make sure to share with you guys what I learned. What I want to hear from you guys now is what you wish you knew before you started your fitness journey or if you haven't started your fitness journey, what is stopping you? I know how hard it is and you're not alone, especially now with social media. I started my Instagram and my journey because I loved connecting with other people and helping other people and that is always going to be my number one priority. So if there's ever any questions that you have, please don't hesitate to comment, DM me, email me, and I will always do my best to help. So, all right guys, I hope you enjoyed a bit about my transformation. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>